Hi everyone. So, in this video what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you a bit of an introduction to the Extended Essay, or EE for short, and more specifically how you could potentially do a Mathematics EE. So, first things first, what is the EE? So basically it's like a research paper, it's an in-depth study of a topic of your choice. You can do any subject that is offered within your IB session, and you can do pretty much any topic within that. It's entirely up to you. There are a few little limitations, but for the most part, you get quite a bit of freedom to choose what you want to do. So by, by what I mean in your session is like, if you're a November student, you look at what subjects are offered in that November session. Or if you're a May student, you look at what's offered in May of that year in that session. That's like what I mean by the subject in that session. Now, what it requires, it has all these marking criteria and certain ones include research and like good writing and structuring and all that. So this requires a lot of in-depth research. You've got to look for a lot of stuff and you've got to incorporate that into your essay. And that's a very, very important factor within your extended essay. Even if you're doing an English EA, you still need to incorporate research somehow. Now, what you've got to ultimately submit is one essay, which gets marked and three reflections. And those reflections are meant to be like of the progress you made while writing that big essay. Now, this essay is quite large. It's around 4,000 words usually, that's the maximum. So, usually you get a supervisor that's meant to provide you guidance, especially when you're formulating your question, your plans, and they sort of just give you a little bit of advice or maybe tell you what not to do. They usually can't do too much, but they should be able to give you a at least a little bit of feedback. Now, what's very important is that you need to do this essay to pass the IB. You need at least a D. If you get an E, you fail the whole IB. So, it's very important that you give this a crack. You actually should and try to do your best with it because it is quite important in my opinion, especially if you want to pass the IB. Now, what are the requirements? So as I was saying, you submit one full essay and three reflections. Now the essay has a maximum of 4,000 words. And within those 4,000 words, you also need to include consistent referencing and a coherent structure. And you basically want to create a research question and the whole essay is meant to be aiming to like answer that research question. That's sort of how the EA works. You sort of have a research question and the whole essay is meant to try to just achieve that and incorporating all this research and you know legible and readable structure, that kind of thing. Now also what you need is you need to, have to make sure your pages are numbered. You also need to include three reflections. Now they should total to 500 words. So if, if you add up all the words in reflections one, two, and three, the total should be no more than 500 words. If you do anything more than 500 words, they won't read. Same thing with the essay. If you do more than 4,000 words, they will stop reading when they reach 4,000 words. So be very wary of that. Do not go over that word limit. And those reflections, um, there are three of them. The first one should be roughly around the start when you've sort of had an idea, you've sort of maybe developed a bit of a question, a preliminary research one, and you've started approaching it. That should be when your first reflection happens. Second one should be like around the middle, maybe after you've written up a decent chunk of the essay. And then the end, you write one after you've finished submitting it and you sort of reflect on the progress you made and how what you think of the final product and how you feel like you've grown as an individual. I'll sort of cover a bit more details about the reflections in a later video. So here's some advice. So this video is going to be a general introduction to EE, but also all about how if you want to do a maths EE. Now, Generally speaking, I would say for any subject you choose, because you get to choose whatever subject you want, generally speaking, or the school allocate you want. But if you get the choice, I would say definitely do a subject that you are already doing in the IB. So if you are doing chemistry and not biology, I would not suggest doing a biology EA. But like, you know, if I was doing physics, I would say maybe I could consider doing a physics EA. If I'm doing English um, literature, I could consider doing English literature EA. So I would suggest doing an EA on a subject that you're already studying in the IB because the EA is quite comprehensive. You need to be quite detailed, go through a lot of, and have a good understanding of the foundations of that subject. And I feel like the best way to do that is to already be studying it in the IB. Otherwise, you might be playing a bit of catch up. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible. You could like, I don't know, do a history EA despite not doing it in the IB, but it, I generally will say it's probably a bit harder. But it's up to you. And if you feel like you're really confident in a certain topic or a certain area and you really want to go through it, um, you can always go for it. What I should also say is I also do not, do not suggest doing a maths EE if you are not doing maths HL. Whether it's AA or AI, if you're doing SL, I do not suggest you do a maths EE. 
because your EE should be relatively rigorous, especially for mathematics, and incorporate a lot of research and a lot of fairly sophisticated mathematics. Now, I think that is quite a bit trickier. You might have to self-teach a fair bit more if you're doing SL rather than someone that's doing HL. So I would highly suggest if you're doing SL, consider a different subject for your EE. Now, what's also important is that after you've chosen your subject, you're also going to choose your topic. Now, I think when you're choosing a topic, you should consider something that you're interested in. Yes, of course, that is very important, but also something you're familiar with or you understand well, or you feel like you can communicate well. Because if you try to do something interesting, that interests you, but is way too complicated, you might suffer because of that. But if you choose something that is doable, but also interesting, that would be generally the combination that you need. I would say do not do something you think is easy, but you are not interested in because it'll be very hard to personally engage or be motivated to do such a comprehensive research project and also to write these reflections about your progress if you are not actually invested in what you're writing about. So try to choose something you're interested in, but also consider how doable it is, how possible it is to capture a comprehensive research essay in 4,000 words. Now, you should also make sure that when you're looking for something, it should have a good foundation of research. That means there's a lot of current ideas and you can sort of get a good understanding and sort of build up that prior knowledge, but also make sure you choose a topic where you can bring something new to the table. You don't want to just be reiterating other people's work. You want to be exploring something in your own independent way. So you need to make sure when you're checking, check there's a good foundation, but you've also got to think, how can I build on this? How can I contribute something brand new, something interesting, that kind of idea. If you can do that, that would be laying the foundation for a good EE. Now, what I suggest is during your actual time, if you're going to do a maths EE, consider, and not even just a maths EE, any EE, write a journal about like how your ideas have changed, how potential drafts, brainstorms, all those kind of things, all your decisions. Because if you have a journal written up, it'll be a lot easier when you're doing your reflections because you can just check and see everything. Now, what is also very important is referencing. Very, very important throughout the whole essay. And that could be done through in-text referencing or footnotes. Whichever one you do, as long as you're consistent, it is fine. Now, what you also need is a bibliography at the end. Very, very important. I'll go through those details a bit in a later video, but just important to keep in mind. So this is a research paper. So with all the research you do, try to keep all of the websites, all the articles, all the books you look at in a safe space so you can see where you got all your ideas from because if you incorporate it into your essay later, you need to include a reference for it. Now let's talk about the Mass E specifically. You create a research topic, a research question regarding a mathematical topic and your essay will basically aim to answer that question. That's the whole essay's point. You're just going to be answering that question. Now you can choose a topic from any field that incorporates maths. It could be engineering, physics, statistics, social sciences, anything really. There's a lot of freedom with this. You can do anything as long as it incorporates some level of mathematical exploration. So, as long as you maintain a consistent mathematical focus, they will be fine. You can do from any field out there. Now, what you should be incorporating is both primary and secondary research where appropriate. Secondary would be like other people's research, other people's like theorems, all those kind of ideas. Primary research would be potentially like, you know, you going out and gathering your own data or sort of looking at raw data from like a statistics website and sort of doing your own thing with it. That is incorporating primary data. Secondary is sort of getting other people's research or their own conjectures, all that kind of thing. Now, you also need to make sure that your question and your essay is able to adequately answer the research question you've laid out within 4,000 words. Now, I know 4,000 words sounds like a lot, but generally speaking, when you start writing, there's a tendency to start with a research question that's too broad and you realize that those 4,000 words actually stack up pretty quick. So make sure that your research question is focused and it is doable to do within 4,000 words. Now, for the reflections, the focus is going to be on planning, research, and the writing process. So you're going to be reflecting on the process, how all of these factors about the planning and the research and all that, how that has changed the way you've seen things, maybe changed your approach to the question, all those kind of ideas. Maybe you might have even changed your question, you might have changed your whole essay, all those kind of things. Those are what the reflections are for, meant to be considering how the process has changed the essay and also changed you, the way you think about everything. 
So I want you to talk a lot about the decisions you've made, what ideas you've had to change, what has gone wrong, but also how you've gotten around it. Or, you know, how could this be a potential issue in the future? And, you know, how is the way you see the topic? Because you probably would have done a lot more research as time goes on. How is the way you see the issue changed? Maybe you might have realized you misinterpreted something and you needed to change it up. Or maybe you thought of a, you thought of a better avenue of research. All those kind of things. That's what the reflections are for. Sort of discussing how your ideas have changed over time as you've researched and written everything out. Now, when it comes to finding a topic, I would very much suggest just brainstorming. Similar process with the maths IA, just write down any ideas that sort of are interesting. Now, what's also very important for you is you need to do a lot of research. So you need to go read through a lot of stuff, search up any areas that might interest you, see if there's any potential avenues, write notes. I would very much suggest having like a, a OneNote or a Word document where you just have potential ideas and like maybe sub dot points underneath each one and potential research points that you've gotten from different websites and all that. Now, what's an awesome op is you could potentially discuss potential ideas with experts. Maybe you could research and email a lecturer and sort of discuss this topic or something like that. So these are just ways to sort of get a bit more of like um, a research idea, You're sort of getting more around, more things to consider. Now also, once again, I've read, as you may see, I've written research three times as three different dot points. That's because you need to do a lot of research. You need to do a lot of reading taking a lot of notes and even more research. Now, what you also need to consider when you're finding a topic is how much do I understand and what can I contribute to this area? Now, if you don't understand much about the topic, that's fine, but you'll need to work harder to make sure you garner that understanding. If, it, if you find that the topic is far too hard to understand, far too complicated, there's way too much to explain, you may need to reconsider your question, your topic, or your approach, depending on what you have. But then also you need to consider what can I contribute? If this is an area that's like everyone's already done everything for it, there's probably not much point in considering that topic because there's not really much new you can contribute. So that's very important. The EE really requires an independent voice. It needs you to try to do something new. It might not be groundbreaking. You might not change the world, but as long as you're just trying to do something that isn't just regurgitating something from a website, and you're sort of very clearly thinking about what you're doing and considering your approach, that's what they're after. So what's next? I'll be covering a video on planning and writing for the EE a bit later on. I've got a bunch of videos all planned out, so we're gonna go through all of those. Now, what I also suggest is doing a bit of wide reading. See if there's anything you're interested in. Maybe, you know, go take a look at the textbook and see if there's any potential like applications of syllabus dot points that really, really interest you. Potentially try to also discuss stuff with your supervisor. If you have a supervisor, try to talk to them, sort of bounce ideas, see if they like any of the ideas that you are considering. Now, similar thing to what I was saying before, go through your math syllabus and see if there's anything that you really, really engage with. If you're really into matrices, maybe you can look at practically applying it to, I don't know, probability or physics or something like that. Like all those kind of things. If there's anything that really interests you, I'd very much consider looking into it. Now, also, as I was saying before, write out a brainstorm, write out a bunch of like dot points everywhere, a bunch of ideas branching off each other, all that kind of thing. If you can consider that, I think that'll sort of help to sort of structure your ideas and maybe you can see potential links and all that kind of thing. And also consider things that you're passionate about. You want to do something that interests you because if you don't, this EA is going to be a massive, massive trek if you're not interested in what you're writing about. So try to think about what do you personally engage with? what you think would be doable, what would be um, not too difficult to understand, but also consider what would interest you as a person. And yeah, so thank you for watching and I'll see you all in my next EE video.